The defining piece of gear for vertical caving, and a critical tool for most techniques in cave rescue, is the rope. Almost all vertical caving and cave rescue utilizes static kern mantle rope made from either nylon or polyester fibers. These are available in various diameters, with 9 to 11 millimeters being the most common for recreation and 11 to 13 millimeters being popular for cave rescue. Attaching the rope to an anchor such as a tree, rock, bolt, stretcher, or a caver requires knots. Knot is the commonly used term for tying a rope to another object or itself although technically these ties can more accurately be classified as either knots, hitches, or bends. Static kern mantle ropes have a sheath or mantle that is designed to protect the kern or core from abrasion and dirt. The core of the rope is typically responsible for 70 to 80 percent of the rope's strength, but is susceptible to damage if exposed. Static ropes are characterized by having an elongation of less than 2 percent when subjected to the load of a typical caver. The low stretch of these static ropes allows for better control and efficiency when rappelling, ascending, or hauling, and minimizes abrasion. Static ropes do not have enough stretch to limit the impact forces of a lead climbing fall, so for belaying a lead climber, a dynamic rope is required. While there are a myriad of knots available for a variety of uses, there are about a dozen that are considered fundamental to vertical caving and cave rescue. Knowledge of how to tie these knots and how best to use them is a good skill set to develop for any beginning vertical caver or someone planning to take a cave rescue class. Knowledge of how to tie the knots, hitches, and bends presented in this video needs to be demonstrated as part of the entrance skills evaluation for National Cave Rescue Commission week-long training classes. Most knots require that the rope make a series of tight bends, and these cause a reduction in strength. Some types of knots are more efficient at retaining the original strength of the unknotted rope, but a conservative rule of thumb is to simply assume that a knot will reduce the rope strength by about 50%. When tying any knot, there are a few things to consider regarding quality. Loop knots should have a loop length that is the minimum required for the intended use. Knots should be set and well dressed. Dressing simply means that strands within the knot do not cross over each other unnecessarily, or that webbing is not twisted. Dressing a knot typically does not make it stronger, but it does make it easier to inspect, uses slightly less rope, and makes the knot easier to set. Setting a knot means that it is pre-tightened, usually by pulling on each strand and loop coming out of the knot. Setting a knot means that things such as anchor rigging or cow's tails don't change their adjustment once weighted, and the knots are less likely to come loose during use. For knots tied near the end of a rope, the length of the tail needs to be appropriate for the type of knot. Too long of a tail wastes rope, and too short of a tail comes with the risk that the end of the rope might get pulled through the knot during tensioning, possibly leading to failure. For some knots, a long tail is not enough to prevent failure, and a safety tie-off may be necessary. After tying any knot, do a quick check on loop size, dressing, setting, and tail length before trusting it. The figure 8 on a bite is probably the most commonly used knot in caving. Start by forming a bite of rope that is about 20 inches from the end of the rope. This is about the distance from your elbow to the end of your fingers. Twist the bite around itself twice, and then pass the bite through the loop that is formed. Dress and set the knot and verify it has a tail of about 4 inches. It is strong, easy to tie, easy to inspect, and has many uses. It is a loop knot that can be used to attach either the end or middle of the rope to an anchor or the caver. The figure 8 follow through is essentially the same knot as the figure 8 on a bite but it is a way of tying it around a fixed object such as a column. A standard figure eight is tied by taking a bite of rope, twisting it twice, and passing the tail of the rope through the loop that is formed. Pass the tail around or through the object it is being attached to, and then follow the path of the rope backwards through the original eight. The standing end and the tail should both come out of the same end of the knot, and it should have the classic shape of an eight. 
It is a common knot used in attaching a rope to natural anchors, and it is also the standard knot used for tying into a belay rope. The double figure eight is a double loop knot that can be tied in the end or middle of the rope and is most often used to attach the rope to a two bolt anchor. Start with a large bite of rope and begin as you would for a standard figure eight on a bite by putting two twists in the loop. Rather than pass the end of the bite through the loop that is formed, pass the middle of the bite into this loop and take the end of the bite and pass it over the rest of the knot. Tighten and dress the knot. The relative lengths of the two loops can be easily adjusted by pulling rope through from one loop to the other. The loop lengths can be adjusted during the dressing phase in order to make sure that the force on a two bolt anchor is equalized. After adjustment of the loop lengths, the knot should be set. The bowline is a quick and easy knot that can be used to secure the end of a rope around a fixed anchor. To tie it, make a loop in the standing line with the standing end passing around the back side of the loop. Pass the tail of the rope around the anchor, up through the loop from below, around the standing line and back down through the loop. In most applications it can serve the same function as a figure 8 follow through, but it takes less rope to tie and can be tied more rapidly. The downside is that it isn't quite as secure and should always have a safety back up on the tail. The preferred orientation is to tie it such that the tail comes out on the inside of the loop that is formed. The tail should then be tied off with an overhand or double overhand, or what is referred to as a Yosemite finish with the tail following the main line back through the knot. It's critical that the bowline be well set to prevent it from coming loose. There are two common ways to tie the butterfly knot. The first uses a bite that is twisted twice and the bite is passed under and through the middle of these twists. The alpine butterfly, or simply butterfly knot, is a strong midline knot that is typically used in rigging multi-point anchors or traverse lines, or as a knot for isolating a damaged spot in a rope. The second method involves wrapping the rope around the hand three times and passing the middle strand under the right strand and then around and through the loops that are formed by all of the strands. Loop length can be adjusted during dressing of the knot. It has the advantage that the two strands of the main line coming out of the knot can both be tensioned without the risk of the knot rolling or capsizing as can happen with a figure eight on a bite. The square knot is an easy to tie knot that is usually used for securing the two tails of the rope when tying a rope coil or for securing the closure of a tackle bag. It is generally not used for rigging or life safety applications because it is somewhat weak and may easily come loose. Wrap the two rope ends around each other twice and pull tight and then pull the ends together again and wrap them around each other twice in the opposite direction. If tied properly, the strands exiting each side of the knot should be parallel. If using the square knot for a more critical application, such as the perimeter line around a rescue litter, then the tail should have a safety backup such as an overhand. The double overhand knot has multiple uses. It can be tied near the end of the rope to function as a stopper knot that reduces the risk of accidentally repelling off the end. It can also be tied around the rope after passing the rope through a carabiner, forming a very strong cinch knot that is the preferred way of attaching a carabiner to the end of a cow's tail. This version of the knot is often referred to as a barrel knot. When fully dressed and set on a carabiner, it holds the carabiner firmly in place, which makes it easier to clip to ropes or anchors.
The double fisherman's bend is used to join two ropes together or to tie two ends of a single strand of cord to form a loop. The double fisherman's knot or bend is two double overhand knots tied around opposing strands. A loop made from accessory cord between 6 and 8 millimeters in diameter can be used to tie a prusik hitch. A prusik hitch is a type of friction hitch that is tied around a main line of a larger diameter. The general rule is to tie a prusik hitch using accessory cord that is roughly two-thirds of the diameter or 3 millimeters smaller in diameter than the main line. This can be used as an emergency ascender or as a rope grab or progress capture device in a haul system. The most common version of this hitch is a loop made of 8mm accessory cord tied to either 11mm or half inch static rope using a triple wrap prusik hitch. The clove hitch can be used to secure the middle of the rope to a carabiner or myone for rigging, or to tie off the end of the rope to a natural anchor or the handle of a rescue litter. It uses very little rope, and its position on the rope can be easily adjusted. If tying near the end of the rope, then it needs to have a safety backup, such as an overhand or double overhand knot, to secure the tail. There are various ways to tie the clove hitch, depending on whether it can be clipped into a carabiner, or if it needs to be tied around a fixed object. The Munter hitch can be used for an emergency rappel, lowering a load, or belaying. The Munter allows the rope to move through the hitch while friction is generated from the rope passing around the carabiner end itself. It must be used on a special HMS style locking carabiner that has a wider end, which allows the knot to reverse. The knot orientation changes when switching from holding a load to feeding slack. The Munter hitch is also useful as part of a releasable anchor when combined with a secure lock-off. There are several methods for creating a secure lock-off, but a half hitch and overhand is probably the easiest to tie. After tying the Munter, a bite is formed in the working end of the rope, then fed around the standing end, through the loop that is formed, and tightened making a half hitch. This holds the Munter and can be released even when loaded. The bite that is formed should be tied off with an overhand to secure it. The water knot or ring bend is the standard method for tying the ends of webbing together to form a loop that can be used for applications such as anchor rigging or an emergency harness. A single overhand is tied in one end of the webbing and the other tail of the webbing follows this knot backwards. 
The knot should be dressed and set with no twists in the webbing and at least a four inch tail.